Howdy, howdy, Chris here, and today we're going to repair and paint this Nissan Altima. This customer had a little bit of a collision with a deer, and even though the damage looks extensive, it's really just superficial. So this is not something you should be afraid to tackle at home. The first thing we're going to do is tear this vehicle down and evaluate the damaged area. We're going to make a list of all the parts that we need. Now, as far as the parts are concerned, there's a variety of different places you can get parts. If you're looking for parts, you can always go to an aftermarket supplier such as Keystone or CertiFit. You can use a salvage yard and get used parts. Sometimes those are damaged and need to be repaired before installed. You can also obviously go to the dealer. Now some of those parts may be more expensive through the dealer, but sometimes it's the only option. This vehicle we put on a used fender, had a little bit of damage on it, we repaired. We also replaced the hood with an aftermarket hood. Um, we did a bump, aftermarket bumper cover, aftermarket headlight. We did test fit the fenders and the bumper cover and the headlight on this vehicle. Now we need to prepare for blending. We are blending into this fender here. We need to prep that out with 600 grit sandpaper and we're going to blend the color and clear it. Off camera, we cut in and painted the jams of the replacement parts like the fender and this hood. And now those are ready to be painted on the outside and installed. But right now what we need to do is we need to prep out these panels for paint. We've went ahead and removed the trim on the door, the door handle, the weather belts, the mirror. Remove those so we can use our orbital sander with some 600 grit sandpaper and sand this smooth. Now we're being careful. We're using the interface pad and we're not going to sand any edges or any body lines with this orbital sander. We're going to do all that by hand. And the reason we do that is we don't want to break through the clear coat into the paint where we have to put color on it. This is for blending purposes, so we have a good color match from the fender to the door. We'll use the orbital sander to sand all the large areas and get those ready for clear. Then we'll use a gray scotch bright to hit all the body lines and those contours. There's been some questions on what kind of sandpaper you can use to prep out a blend, and you can use you can use sandpaper other than just 600. You could use 800 or 400. Now, with 400, you need to be careful because 400 grit scratches are a little coarse for a high metallic finish, and they could it could cause some modeling or some metallics to lay funny in those scratches. So, for that purpose and that reason, I like to use 600. It's a good coarse enough scratch for that clear to adhere, and it's also going to be uh, good with metallics. You're not going to have any issues with metallics laying in those scratches funny. At least I never have. So that's the reason I use 600. Uh, it's really a personal preference. Um, but just to be safe, 600 is going to give you all those things that you need for prepping and blending a panel. This fender we previously sanded with 600 grit and then we jammed it in and we got some overspray on the outside of this panel. So we need to smooth that out with the 600, get it nice and smooth in preparation for more paint and clear. Now we have the vehicle all masked off and ready to spray. We're going to go ahead and tack rag this. Now previously we've washed this with wax and grease remover. That'll remove any contaminants, oils, or debris that are on the panel so you get a nice clean paint job. You actually do that before you sand and then I also do it after I sand. And now we'll tack rag it off. This will remove any dust that's landed on the vehicle um, so we get a nice clean paint job. I am not covering masking in this video, but if you want to learn more about how to mask your vehicle properly, the techniques that I use, check out the video link I'll leave at the end. For this repair, I am going to use a wet bed or a clear base on the blending panels. Using a wet bed before you apply your color is going to give you a good base for those metallics to lay nice and uniform in. A wet bed is a really good idea to use on a really hot day or if you have a real high metallic finish. If you want to learn more about wet beds and when to use them and how to use them, go ahead and check out the video link at the end. If you appreciate this content and want to help out the channel, all you have to do is like, subscribe, and definitely leave a comment down below and say howdy. You can also check out my storefront. The link is in the description for all the products and tools I use in these videos. 
I've pre-mixed the color, so let's switch over to the color and start spraying our first coat of base. Because we're replacing the hood, we need to blend into this fender. So I'm putting one coat of color across the top part of this fender, and I'm also going to do it at the bottom where the bumper meets the fender. I'll start the blend on the door by covering the first few inches of the door with color. And then we'll put a coat of paint over the entire fender. The paint I'm using today is the Nason XL. I purchased this at my local O'Reilly's. And I'm using the 3M Performance Gun to spray the base. When you're applying your first coat of base, you want a medium to wet coat of paint. Make sure that you go around all those edges to make sure those are covered. When you're spraying your base, you want to overlap 70% on your passes. Now the settings I'm using today, I have my fan pattern almost wide open. My volume is set three turns out from closed. And my air pressure is set at 20 PSI for this particular gun. Now that I've covered the blend on the edge of the door, I'm going to work that blend out just a little bit farther into the door. I'm using kind of an angle up and then an angle down. I'll put one more coat of blend on this fender and then that these panels will be ready to go and we'll start spraying our hood. I'll check out the coverage with my light, making sure everything's covered and we have a consistent transition in the blend. Now it's time for clear coat and if you're doing this at home, make sure your base coat is cure and it's dry and make sure you tack off your panels before you spray your clear coat. This will eliminate any lint or debris. On the first coat of clear, you wanna lay down a nice medium to wet coat. We're not looking to make this coat of clear perfect. We wanna lay down a nice coat of clear for the second and final coat. I've bumped up the pressure on my clear coat gun to 24 PSI for this particular gun. Typical conventional guns run between 25 and 29 PSI for clear. One tip I can give a first time painter is never start or stop spraying clear on the panel. If you notice, I spray right off the panel and I'll start it before I make my next pass. So that's one tip that's gonna eliminate an opportunity for a run. When you're laying down clear coat, you wanna overlap 70%. You wanna have a consistent distance from the panel. Typically, that's three to five inches. You wanna have a consistent speed as well. There's no need to be timid or nervous when you're spraying your clear coat. Just relax and remember your techniques and execute it.
A lot of times I like to spray my hoods off the vehicle. I do this so I can move around the hood and get all the areas that I need to get easily. Now, there's one tip I can give you while I'm spraying this hood is I, I like to spray to the edge of the hood, but I don't go all the way off the hood. I don't want to blow air down off this panel and onto the floor and stir up any dust that might be on the floor. So what I'll do is I'll spray close to the edge and then I'll come around and do the edge before I make my next pass. So you'll see me go to the edge and then I'll come around here and I'll spray the back edge of this hood and get that covered really well. Now we're going to spray our final coat of clear coat, and this is our finished coat. This is where we want it to look like glass, so we're going to take our time and make sure it's laying down flat and smooth. What I like to do is I slow down my passes just a little bit. I want to put on a little bit more material to help that flow out, help that clear coat flow out like glass. We're going to overlap 70%. And if you notice, I'm going past that door jam there. So between the fender and the door, I'm going right past that gap. We're not going to stop on that gap. We don't want to have any clear coat buildup on the edge of those doors or fenders. That can create a run. As you're laying down your clear coat on the final coat, you want to evaluate that clear coat as it's hitting that panel and, and kind of look in the light and see how it's flowing out. If you see that you have excessive orange peel, you need to adjust your gun or your technique a little bit to flatten that out. Now, if it's a little bit orange peely, you can adjust that with your gun by dialing back your volume and bumping up your air pressure just a little bit, and that'll help it to atomize a little bit better and lay flatter. If you have some dry areas and then you have some really slick areas in, in parts, that means you have a technique issue and you want to evaluate your technique, make sure you're doing all the things you need to do to get the best finish possible. The second coat of clear coat on the hood, we're going to slow down just a bit, put a little bit more material on a hood. You don't have to be so concerned with a run on a hood, although you can run it on some of those contours, so be careful. Just use consistent speed, consistent distance, and then overlap 70%, and make sure it's laying down like glass. And if you, it doesn't lay down like glass for some reason and you have more orange peel than you need, check out the video. I'll leave a link at the end, how to repair orange peel and take care of that. It's not a real big issue. If you have particles of dust, this video will help you with that as well. Some trash that can be wet sanded and removed from your paint job. And just like that, this paint job is done. It's ready to be cut and buffed if we need and put back together and delivered to the customer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Any questions or any video topics that you would like to see covered, let me know in the comments. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.